Yes. You can't steal from your kids and grandkids. And the, the people years before World War II, it's really when, when it started deteriorating, always felt that we needed to pay our debts down. And again, uh, you'll see lots of quotes in the book about what our founding fathers and some of our predecessors thought about sending debt to the next generation, that in fact it was immoral. We've just completely forgotten about that now. Yeah, I think that is the a defining issue of our time. It is. Um, and, you know, the other thing is we need to create a situation uh, that has everybody involved. Everybody has to have skin in the game in order to make this work. We talk about an egalitarian society. Well, if everybody is paying according to their ability, which is what the tithing system was, it's proportional. If you make a gazillion dollars, you pay a lot of tax. If you make very little, you pay very little tax. But your skin is in the game. Now, the reason that our government, as it stands now, doesn't like that is because if everybody has skin in the game, it makes it a whole lot harder for you to raise taxes. And now you got to be accountable to everybody. And you can't just make 1% or 2% or 5% mad. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll come back. And when we come back, Dr. Carson will share with us his prescription for curing America's failing health care system. And then Ben Carson for president. Well, that was the headline of a recent Wall Street Journal editorial. So are politics and the doctor's future? We'll ask him. And Frank Luntz and his focus group dial the doctor's prayer breakfast speech as Saving America continues. We're glad you're with us. Here's my solution. When a person is born, give them a birth certificate, an electronic medical record, and a health savings account, to which money can be contributed pre-tax from the time you're born to the time you die. When you die, you can pass it on to your family members so that when you're 85 years old and you've got six diseases, you're not trying to spend up everything. You're happy to pass it on, and there's nobody talking about death panels. And welcome back to the special studio audience edition of Hannity. We're calling it Saving America. Joining me tonight for the hour is Dr. Benjamin Carson. Now, ever since his remarks at the National Prayer Breakfast, he has quickly become one of the leading voices against government-run health care. But again, unlike so many of our elected representatives in Washington, he isn't simply just complaining. He's offering real, reasonable answers to help fix the problem. And we welcome back Dr. Carson. And uh, again, thanks for being here. Absolutely. Um, you gave a speech, a commencement speech in 2007, and you used a great analogy about if you give people their own accounts, and you use food stamps as an analogy. Right. And you said people don't buy a porta house on day one. Right, exactly, because, uh, you know, there are some government programs that do work, and, and food stamps do save people's lives. I think uh, probably it's been abused a little bit and gone beyond that point now, but it, it, it serves as a good model because when people get their monthly allocation, they don't go out and buy porta house steak the first five days and starve the rest of the month. They learn how to allocate. And if you make people responsible financially for their own health with their own health savings account, believe me, they're not going to run off to the emergency room where things cost five times as much. They're going to go to a clinic. They've got the same treatment in the clinic, but the difference is in the clinic, uh, if they have some chronic disease, hypertension, diabetes, what have you, now you're going to get that under control too, so you're not back there in three weeks with another problem. So it begins to make a great deal of difference. Also, with the health savings account, you are going to develop a relationship with that health care provider. It's not this big nebulous third party. It's you and the provider. And you're, you're not going to allow that provider to say you need five CT scans when you only need one nor is he going to suggest that because he knows that's coming directly out of your HSA. And it's going to make, it's going to bring medicine more into the free market because people are now going to be competing. And uh, this is the way it should be. You know, it's interesting. I have never been able to figure out. Government never put our Social Security money in a lockbox right. like they said they would. Medicare is headed for bankruptcy. We talked about the debt, $16 trillion. Why do you think so many people put their faith, hope, trust in government to be the answer and what do you think of Obamacare? Well I think um, that we've been programmed unfortunately to become victims and to think that somebody should be taking care of us. We've gone to a can-do nation to a what can you do for me nation and we start inculcating that into people at an early age. You go to schools now and 
they don't want to give the outstanding academic award because everybody's outstanding. And I uh, don't want anybody to feel bad. You know, come on, give me a break. But, but you know, you start all of that stuff. You and can't it, play dodgeball <laughs> either, doctor. You, know, you can't keep score. Yeah. So yeah. It, it perpetuates itself throughout their lives. And all of a sudden, you wind up with a bunch of uh, people who want to occupy everything because, you know, it's theirs anyway. You didn't deserve that. It should be mine. Doesn't that go back to a lesson that you say your mother taught you about you control your destiny Absolutely. And, and these health savings accounts? And you even said people that are poor and indigent. Right. That there would be a way to help them. And right, because um, the government is already spending enormous amounts of money on health care dollars on indigent people. Taking not all that money, only a portion of it, but divvying it up into people's HSAs over which they now have some control would make a huge difference. Now, will it be necessary to do some fine tuning uh, and will it be necessary to uh, create some encouragements for people who are not indigent to put money into their HSAs, to encourage their employers to put money into their HSAs? Yes, but these are all things that we can work out. What we need to do is get out of the framework of as soon as somebody's saying something, say, no, 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 that can't work, that's why I can't, and say, you know, yeah, that can work, and here's how it can work. And if we begin to put our minds together and understand the concept that we're aiming at, and that is bringing some personal responsibility into the healthcare arena, we can solve that problem. We gotta get over the ideology. If we strain everything through an ideological screen, we will never make any progress. Let me ask you, how many people in our audience, if I can get an audience shot, think that if the Republicans articulated what Dr. Carson is saying, <laughs> you're laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many of you think Obamacare maybe wouldn't have passed? Yeah. Show of hands. Yeah. That's, that's a, so there's a failure on the political opposition side of that debate too then. Uh, I, and I don't know why that is. I don't know either. I'm not sure why they're not coming up with, with, with the right kinds of answers here. Well, that dovetails perfectly into our next segment about your potential political future. Uh, <laughs> when we come back, Carson 2016 has a nice ring to it, but are politics in the doctor's future? I'll ask him. Plus, Frank Luntz and his focus group, they dialed Dr. Carson's prayer breakfast remarks and wait till you see what caused the dials to go through the roof across party lines. All of that and more as our special studio audience edition of Hannity rolls on. Welcome back to the studio audience edition of Hannity. And tonight we are focusing on saving America with a very special guest, Dr. Benjamin Carson. Now, he is the director of pediatric neurosurgery at John Hopkins University. Now, his remarks at last week's National Prayer Breakfast not only set the blogosphere on fire, it also resulted in many asking him to consider a run for elected office. Now, that includes the Wall Street Journal editorial board, which recently published a column that was titled, quote, Ben Carson for president. Now, in just a moment, I'll ask him if he has any plans to pursue a career in politics. But first, pollster Frank Luntz recently convened a focus group of California voters and asked them to watch and dial the doctor's popular speech. Let's take a look at this. Sean, the words of Benjamin Carson have really struck a chord with a lot of Americans. We're here in Los Angeles with a group of swing voters, and we want to know what they think of his language. But before we go to them, let's go to a clip that dialed particularly well. Remember, the red line represents swing Republicans, the green line swing Democrats. On the deficit and debt, man, does this guy score well. Our deficit is a big problem. Think about it. And our national debt... Sixteen and a half trillion dollars. You think that's not a lot of money? Tell you what, count one number per second, which you can't even do because once you get to a thousand, you can't. It takes you longer than a second. But one number per second. You know how long it would take you to count the sixteen trillion? Five hundred and seven thousand years. More than a half a million years to get there. We have to deal with this. Clearly, that language connected. Now, tell me, Dr. Carson, what was so powerful? Give me a word or phrase to describe him. Passionate. Articulate. Sincere. Bold and real. Analytical. Self-reliant. Truthful. Sincere. Believable. Provocative. Is this the kind of guy that you want to see in politics? Is this the kind of guy, yet yeah, why yes? He's, he's a guy of, he speaks his mind, and he's very open-minded and Why yes? Passionate. He speaks for physicians, I think, basically. 
I liked his sense of fairness. I felt he was very fair in what he was saying. What is it about him that cut across partisan lines? You never see that in politics these days. It, it, he seemed to care. He seemed to genuinely care about what he was talking about. To me, he was just like me. He was just a regular, ordinary person. Do you think that he was too aggressive? The president was there. Some people thought that it was inappropriate for him to say what he said. You're, you're not in your head, no. You think it was appropriate? I think it was appropriate because you have to hit on the topics that people want to talk about, and we can't keep candy coating everything. So. And this is our country. What does that mean? It belongs to all of us, not just to the people in Washington. All of us. Do you think the people in Washington listen to you? No. Do you think he listens to you? Yes. He yes. being? Dr. Carson. Yes. So there's a language there. Keep going. Tell and me. like you said, it's not American to bite your tongue, to hold back and not say what you think. You guys agree with that? Yes. Yeah. yes. It's a good way to get out of the segment. Sean, <laughs> there aren't many people right now who have the language to connect to the American people, whether it's American values, as you speak of, or common sense, as she spoke of. But there's something about the doctor's message and delivery that really does connect across partisan lines. Very impressive. Back to you. It sounds like Frank may have found some, well, Carson campaign volunteers and still with us to talk about the possibility of a career in politics. The man himself, Dr. Benjamin Carson, just a quick poll. How many of you would like to see Dr. Carson run? <laughs> wow. Okay. That's everybody. <laughs> what, what do you make of that? Um, well, I've always said that the only way I would go into politics is if God grabbed me by the collar and stuck me there. Um, it's, it's not something that has been an ambition of mine. But I, I do have a great desire to get our populace educated. Because if, if we get our populace educated, they will be able to decipher the truth from what's false. And if we don't start doing that, we're going to go down the same path as all the pinnacle nations that preceded us. You, you have said, and I've read a lot of speeches now that you have given, and in commencement speeches and elsewhere, and even I think you mentioned in this speech, that doctors played a very pivotal role in terms of our founding and our framers yes. and you want to see doctors more involved in politics. I do because you know doctors and scientists uh, learn to make decisions based on facts. They use empirical data uh, as opposed to ideologues who don't really have any facts to make their decisions on. Can I a ask, um, you retire in June. Yes. Um, I'm even hesitant to ask you this, but I think I have to because it's on the table. Uh, do you consider, are you aligned with a party? Would you, would you want to answer who you voted for for president? Uh, I'm uh, independent. Okay. And, uh, you know, I tend to align myself closer with parties that uh, are doing things or advocating things that would be good for the country. And, and that should tell you who I voted for. I won't go any further than that. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll take a... <laughs> anyone want to take any bets? But <laughs> All right. Uh, all right. When we come back, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to open all this up to our studio audience of political strategists, journalists, medical experts, much more, as they, along with Dr. Carson, they offer up their solutions for helping to save America, whether it's the economy, health care, all issues on the table. Our studio audience, they'll join the discussion next. Welcome back to the special studio audience edition of Hannity, and Dr. Benjamin Carson is with us. All right, you ready to take our audience questions? Absolutely. All right, let's start over here. Jason. Um, I wanted you, to, wanted you to ask about kids growing up in circumstances that you grew up in today, in the ghetto in particular. Yes. What's missing? Are there not enough adults with that sort of mindset? Is it a leadership failure? Is it a breakdown of the family? Uh, what's the problem? A uh, combination of the things that you mentioned. Uh, there's a, a great family breakdown. For instance, when you look at the African American community, 70% of the babies are born out of wedlock. Now, you're not supposed to talk about that because all family situations are supposed to be equal these days, right? But they're not equal. That father is very much needed. And producing the right kinds of role models for the children and giving them a 